My name is uh, Mohamed Bergash. I'm from Contron. Uh, my talk today will be acceleration options for AI and HPEC. Uh, I will try to ha uh, give you like a broad overview about accelerations on uh, to accelerate up AI applications. I will start by uh, describing what is the, the general uh, workflow that needs to be done to take a, an AI model and deploy it onto the edge. Then I will talk about software acceleration, follow it by hardware acceleration, and then I will finish by a conclusion and takeaways. Okay, first, uh, just to put everything in perspective, uh, initially we have AI models that runs, uh, to, uh, runs and trained in the data center. In the data center, those AI applications needs basically on AI uh, deep learning model, uh, it has two phases. It has one phase is forward pass and one phase is backward pass. The backward pass, back, it's called back propagation that, that is needed to, to train the model. Then uh, on, the other, uh, on the other hand, on the edge, we have a computer that needs to be a, uh, efficient in uh, size, size and weight and power. Uh, to take a model from a data center and run it on the edge, you need to run through some operations. Uh, those operations, we can summarize them as a model conversion. On the model conversion, first thing what you need to do is to remove all the backward uh, propagation uh, uh, operations because you don't need them. You need just to run through your model one pass at a time. Uh, this is the first pass. Then you need to also to make your uh, uh, model usable by uh, uh, a, a, a C code or an application without having all those uh, operations on, in code. Then you need to serialize your, your, uh, uh, your model. Uh, second thing is you need to be aware of what, what is the hardware that you are deploying to. And uh, usually your model has multiple operations. And sometimes those acceleration hardware doesn't have the right operations. For example, there are some that, 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 is, that are lacking for uh, division operation, just for example. Then you need to convert all those operations that are not supported on the initial model and to rewrite your code to, to, uh, to be uh, uh, efficient. Uh, after that, you need to do some scheduling. Uh, scheduling, uh, I mean by scheduling, for example, if you have a big model that is running on a data center and you want to deploy it to one small ASIC chip, uh, chip this small ASIC chip, your model may, may not fit on that chip. Then you need to schedule it on two or three chips, for example. Okay. Next, I will talk about uh, deep learning model accelerations in general. There are two types. First type is algorithmic accelerations that are done only on algorithmically, okay? I will call it software or algorithmic. Second one is hardware accelerations. And to get the best performance, you need to combine the two. You have algorithmic and ac uh, hardware accelerations. What I mean by uh, algorithmic accelerations? First, I will characterize, uh, categorize it on two parts. First one is pre-training. Pre-training, it means that your model is uh, before, before you, you train your model. While you are designing your model, you can optimize it. First thing, you can optimize it for computations. Computations, basically, on uh, deep learning models, you have a lot of uh, uh, convolutions. And there are a lot of techniques to do that. I'm just going over some of them. FFT, Winograd, Atrus convolutions, one by one convolutions. Uh, second category is the deep learning model structure. On the deep learning model structure, there is, you can change the structure of your uh, deep learning model. This way you can run uh, better. And uh, right now the state of the art uh, technique is called uh, AutoML or NAS network architecture, architecture search. And those ones try to train a meta model that will find the best architecture. Second one is the post-training. When you finish, you developed your model, you trained it, 
uh, you have a good results, now you want to deploy it. To deploy it, there are like one technique is called model pruning. Those are like the two main techniques. Model pruning and second one is called model quantization. Model quantization, basically when you train your model, you train it on a 32-bit basis. You need to make sure that your model, because you don't need all that, this precision, you need to lower it down to 8-bit or 4-bit uh, or even lower to 1-bit. On model quantization, there is two types. There is optimi optimization for size. If you need, for example, uh, your deep learning model has a lot of weights. Sometimes it has like 100 megabytes or more if you have, and you multiply that with the number of models that you have. Uh, you, want to, uh, uh, you want to compress that to a, a smaller footprint, memory footprint. Uh, you do that, it's called optimize, optimize for weight. You, ch ch you change only your weight to a lower precision. Second one is optimize, optimize for latency. Uh, for, optimiz for optimization on latency, you want to run your model faster. To run your model faster, you need to change the operation to be running on 8-bit. For example, an 8-bit uh, ratio between 32 and 8-bit is by 4. Uh, just to give you a small uh, diagram to explain a little bit what is the quantization, uh, for example, here we have a Gaussian, and we want to quantize it for uh, in a ternary basis, like a three bit. Uh, you take, you, do, you threshold all your data from, for example, a minus 0 0.6, and you say this is a minus one, mi uh, 0 0.6, minus 0 0.6, to so 0.6 is a zero, and above uh, uh, 0.6, it's a one. Uh, another technique is going even lower. It's uh, called, uh, it's called uh, binary or XNOR. Uh, this company. Uh, it's basically a company called uh, XNORnet. Uh, they basically, they just got bought by uh, Apple. And Apple bought them to optimize their uh, algorithms to run on a smartphone uh, very fast. Uh, we see here that we take the uh, input, uh, and input is a binary, and uh, uh, input weights are binary, and uh, also, and then, if you have two binary operations, basically you will need just bitwise operation to do your, your, uh, your uh, deep learning model. And, uh, and the performance is basically 58x speed up. Uh, second one is uh, model pruning. Model pruning, basically you take your model and you try to remove all the, the uh, nodes that are not significantly uh, impacting your, your uh, uh, inference. Uh, basically, you try to figure out what is the sparsity of your, your model, and you remove all, all, all nodes that are close to zero. And you can uh, expect, if you do it like um, the, to the extreme, you can expect a 10x speed up. Uh, I want also to touch by this about this thing is a, a floating point. And there is, uh, in that also, there is like uh, an improvement. Basically, when you start with 32-bit, uh, in the 32-bit 30, floating point, you have two parts. You have exponent and mantissa, and the exponent is in 8-bit, OK? Then people, they start to reduce this um, precision to 16-bit. On the regular 16-bit uh, floating point, you, have, you reduce your exponent to 5-bit, OK? And uh, the mantissa is usually used for the precision. And if you don't want that, there is a new type, basically done by Google. It's called bfloat16. Basically, on the same 16-bit, they can fit the same range of data by just expanding the exponent to 8-bit. This is another a nice uh, improvement uh, without, without losing anything from your model. Uh, then, now we finished with the part, first part that talks about the software or algorithmic optimizations. The other one is hardware uh, uh, accelerators. I will start by just giving like a general taxonomy of the hardware. Uh, first type of hardware, there are temporal architectures, CMD, single instruction multiple data, or SEMT, single instruction multiple threads. Those ones are generally CPUs. I'm talking about signal, uh, I'm focusing on uh, one core. I'm not talking about uh, uh, multi-core. Inside one core, you can, uh, it's considered as a CMD or CMT. 
Uh, second one is the GPUs that are the same way. And this is a small diagram describes uh, how these architectures are uh, uh, set. Basically, you have a memory hierarchy, a lot of uh, caches, a hierarchy of caches. You have some registers, and you have control, and you have some ALUs. And those ALUs first doesn't talk to each other. And those ALUs need to execute the same thing and with some uh, masking, basically. Uh, the second uh, family of, uh, of uh, uh, architecture is called spatial architectures or data flow processing. Those ones are FPGAs and a, uh, custom ASICs. And those ones, how, what is the difference uh, between the first one and second one uh, is uh, the registers and the control are uh, uh, distributed on each ALU, ALU uh, arithmetic and logic units. And those ones can talk with each other. Okay, I will start by talking a little bit about the CPUs and uh, uh, the latest CPU from Intel that we will hope to see in the future is a Tiger Lake CPU. It's a 25 watt TDP. And uh, this CPU has one instruction, uh, it's called uh, AVX 512. It's a vectorial unit that uh, can process uh, 512 bit uh, on, uh, at a time. And then they enhance this, uh, uh, this architecture by um, uh, an operation, custom operation called VNNI. Basically, this VNNI, what, what it does, it does take a 16 bit uh, 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 array, a 16 bit vector of uh, 32 elements and multiply it uh, by another one and add the two elements. A0 times uh, B0 plus A1 times B1 on a one clock cycle. Initially, like just to summarize this, what, what, what are the, uh, the operations or like Terra operations that, that we can expect? We can expect from a single core, half a Terra ops uh, per core. This is like just my estimations. I didn't see the, the, the chip yet. Uh, from a Terra operations perspective, uh, for the 25 watt, it's translated to two tera ops, and uh, uh, and if we put it on a ratio between uh, ops and uh, watt, it's 80 giga ops per watt. Uh, just to uh, there is like usually a confusion between flops and ops. Ops usually we talk about int eight, and uh, manufacturers sometimes multiply them by four or by, and they can boost or those numbers. Second category is our, uh, our GPUs. Uh, the latest one is uh, GPUs from uh, NVIDIA, and those ones has a, a sp specific uh, uh, unit that is called tensor cores. Those tensor cores, the tensor is, uh, is a multidimensional matrix, basically. And those tensor core can do a computations very fast f on, on a tensor basis. Uh, on a on, a, on the latest uh, Tesla T4, for example, uh, we can expect 130 tera operations for 70 watt TDP, and this translates to half uh, tera operation per watt. After that, there is uh, another uh, category now, it's uh, the FPGAs. The FPGAs, uh, they are very nice, but always you need to have uh, something that, like an architecture that maps on that FPGA, uh, to be efficient. Uh, Xilinx has a very nice uh, architecture. It's uh, called uh, XDNN. Uh, that one, it has, uh, it's called a systolic array. A systolic array, a systolic, for example, uh, processing, usually systolic processing is a processing when you process a data and you give the partial, uh, uh, a partial result to the next stage, step. You don't start over and it's a flow. And those architecture basically are this maps very well with uh, deep learning. Deep learning models, uh, they, they map very well because the in inherent uh, property of those, uh, 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 of those models are uh, uh, propagating the result to the next level. And uh, with, with this architecture, uh, it has two benefits. One benefit is uh, it has a good efficiency. What I mean by efficiency, like if you have a, a GPU or an accelerator that has maybe 50 tera operations, in, in practice, you will 
basically use 30% of that efficiently. Uh, on those FPGAs, you use maybe 80% of that. Uh, and this chip, for example, has 70 watt, 70, uh, and second, second thing is the latency. The latency is very low on those uh, FPGAs. Uh, for that chip, we have, uh, it dissipates 75 watt, uh, it has 21 tera operations per second, and it can uh, have 0.3 tera ops per watt. The last uh, category is the ASICs, custom ASICs. The custom ASICs, we have TPUs from Google, uh, the TPU, uh, and also from um, uh, Intel, there is Intel Nirvana Spring Crest that is promised to be released. That chip has 119 tera operations, it's 200 watt TDP, and it's a 0.6 tera operations per watt. Uh, the other one is the Google TPU. Uh, uh, it's already released. They have uh, 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 add-in accelerator boards, and they have four tera ops for two watt, and it's two tera ops per watt. It's a very good uh, trade-off here. Just to summarize the hardware architectures, uh, I'm listing here the Intel Teg Tiger Lake uh, uh, CPU is 0.08 tera operation per watt. NVIDIA TP, uh, T4 is half watt, uh, half uh, tera ops. And we see also the latency here and the efficiency are not very good on the GPUs. Uh, the king here is the Xilinx uh, uh, FPGA or any FPGAs and uh, the, the for the teraops per watt, we see the Google Edge TPU is the best. Just my last takeaway, the AI, the AI on the Edge is a reality right now, and every major smartphone basically has an NPU or neural processing unit in it, and it's uh, processing a real-time uh, deep learning model when you open your phone and use the camera or take a selfie. This is like a reality, and it's already deployed, and. The techniques can, can, they are very impressive. Uh, second thing, GPUs are dominant uh, right now, but not in the future. Second thing, specialized hardware at, are much, much more power efficient. And the software ecosystem is, very, is a key ingredient for best performance. What I mean with that, they are comp you need to have a good combination of compilers, libraries, and also, uh, 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 deep, uh, techniques, algorithmic techniques to, to achieve the best performance. And quantization is very, very uh, uh, impressive uh, for the performance with very low uh, effort. Thank you, if you have any questions.